Hi everybody and welcome to this new section of the course. Well, it's time to look back at our application and see what else we can do about it. Well, we said that the, as part of this course, we would have turned our application into a real world one. And I'm sure that you have noticed at this point that there's really something missing from our application to make it real and uh, consumable by a, a user. What's missing is that the application is uh, with static data. So every time we add something and then we refresh or we come back to the application, our data will still be the initial one because we are not storing the data anywhere, right? I could explain you how to connect a SQL database and feel free to add a new discussion to the lesson or to the course itself in case you would like to see some lesson around it. But what I want to show you is something more uh, interesting and we're going to make our application real time and to do so we're going to use an interesting service which is called Firebase. Firebase is an amazing service acquired by Google in October 2014 and it provides a so-called backend as a service functionality. We'll have the chance to use a JSON based data storage therefore it's a NoSQL database and also it has uh, authentication services so we'll be able to authenticate our user and uh, by using the API that Firebase provides. If we look at the features we have Firebase real-time database as I said and we'll talk in a second about what real-time means and also we have Firebase authentication through JSON web tokens and also provides a Firebase hosting, which we are not going to cover at the minute. By real time, we mean that, for example, for our application, if a user adds an event and another user is looking at the uh, event list, it will be able to see in real time the event that has just been added without refreshing the page. So the data will be immediately available to our users. A great thing about Firebase is that you can use it also in offline mode. So you don't have to care if your user is in a tunnel because the data will be anyways shown into the application and persisted to the database whenever the connection is up. So now let's look at how you guys can register to Firebase. There's a free account that you can use and that we are going to use during the course. So click on sign up on the main page on firebase.com and then you'll enter your email address. So I'll enter mine alex at webyourmind.com and I'll create a password which I'm not going to tell you. You click on create my account and you'll be brought immediately to the dashboard. There's a nice tutorial you can look at or the quick start and lots of different examples but what we want to do is actually to check the first app that has been automatically created for us. So if we click on manage app will be brought to our personal URL, which is auto-generated. And that's where the magic happens. So we have a data column on the left sidebar, and that's where our data will be created. And then we have other functionality like security and rules, a simulator for authentication, analytics, and so on. We're going to focus on the data part now. So attached to this lesson, I've added a JSON file, which contains our original events. And what you have to do is to import those events into your, your Firebase application. To do so, just click on import data on the top right side and select your file, which will be events JSON. Click on import JSON, your application will refresh, and now we'll have this data structure. We have events that contains six elements, sorry, seven elements, and each one of these elements are our events. You're already familiar with this data. And what I can do is to change directly the data inside Firebase. And we're going to do that later because I want to show you a magic concept, which is three-way data binding this time. But anyways, that's all you need to do. If we look at our file, the one I've imported, I simply have a regular events array. So all of my events are here. And what we're going to do now is to use a library that Firebase provide. And the library is Angular Fire, which is the Firebase AngularJS library. If you're ready to do so, keep in mind that you'll need your Firebase URL and I'll see you into the next lesson.